Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. It's time to hear from the top Christian litigators in the nation who have come forward to tell us the truth and help us defend our faith. Hear ye, hear ye. All rise. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano is in session. Good morning from the Iowa Catholic Radio Studios in West Des Moines. You're listening to Faith on Trial, and I'm Gina Noel. Today, co-hosting with me is Jean Till again. Good morning. We have a little bit of news yes. on our regular host, mm-hmm. uh, Deacon Mike Mano, our attorney <laughs> uh, extraordinaire. Yes. He uh, has unfortunately suffered a stroke. Um, they were able to um, catch it rather quickly, and he is thank at God. home. Yes, thank God is right. He is, he is at home uh, recuperating. Not sure yet how soon it'll be before he gets back to the mm-hmm. studio. So you're going to have to put up with me and whomever <laughs> I can find to <laughs> co-host with me. So uh, welcome to all of our listeners. Well, um, and prayers for Deacon Mike. Absolutely. absolutely. Keep him in your prayers. And his wife, Luann. <laughs> That's right. She, That's right. They both need uh, a great deal of support from our Lord and our community. So uh, thank you for that. Jean. Yes. Uh, today we have uh, former Tim... Hewell's Camp, who uh, serves as the senior political advisor to the Catholic Vote dot mm-hmm. org, he's with us to talk about what happened on Tuesday and some of the upsets. Yes, so not the- in our hearts, but in some people's <laughs> hearts, there were some upsets uh, nationally. So, yeah, that's so, going to be a good conversation. We've talked about this before, but we know winter's coming. There's certain things that happen. Elections. I wore my mittens today, yes. so yeah, <laughs> winter's coming. <laughs> winter's coming. We've had our our, our elections. And um, I had to scrape my windows for the first time on the car that was outside. So. Oh, no. Yeah, that's that's a sign. Definite yeah. sign. That's a very busy yeah. sign. Um, I know we've had some elections here in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got some new school board members yes. uh, in many of our school districts around the community. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting. I don't think they turned out as well as we thought some of the national uh, races turned out. But we'll keep on top of mm-hmm. them. And I think that um, what we've learned, Jean, and you can correct me if, I'm wrong, but all of us parents and community members understand that it's important to stay on top of what's happening in our school boards because it does affect what it, it dribbles up towards every higher level of um, our elected officials. Well, and even our topic last week where some of the um, pornographic materials that were in our public schools, libraries, <clears throat> and the um, the city libraries, you know, we have to keep on top of that as parents if our kids are in the public school, if they're in a Catholic school, we need to make sure what's in our libraries as well. And because those things are then being decided by school board members. Right. So, yeah, all of those little details that are big details. So we need yeah. leaders that can lead with love mm-hmm. and, and in the truth and, and mm-hmm. help our um, our next generation to understand how our society is uh, good and truthful and filled with love. Mm-hmm. So it's yep. important. Um, in that thought, could how about if we open up with a prayer today? I think so. Praying for uh, Deacon Mike and as well as for all of the world. So our prayer for peace today in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women and peace among the nations of the earth. Turn to your way of love those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred Strengthen us in hope and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world where true peace and love reign among nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That prayer is from Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. It is. I love that prayer, mm-hmm. and I think it's so relevant to all that we talk about here on the show. Yes. Peace will. The peace will bring us um, goodness and love. And, and you know, it talks order. about the hearts divided with hatred and. We see that more and more, um, the, the division among us and how that um, uh, becomes elevated to hate among us. And, and that, it has to stop. And very us. unhealthy. Yes, yes, you're right. Well, we're glad you joined us and we will be back with uh, represent, former Representative Hules Camp uh, from CatholicVote.org to talk about Tuesday's elections right after these messages. Thank you, Caldwell Parish, for underwriting Iowa Catholic Radio. Conform to the wishes of the deceased and to Catholic liturgical burial traditions. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. CaldwellParish.com. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Northwest Bank. Commitment you can bank on. Northwest Bank is a community bank serving Iowa and Nebraska. N-W-B-A-N-K. Thank you, Northwest Bank, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. And we're back with Iowa Catholic Radio's programming for Faith on Trial. We have a former Congressman Tim Poolskamp from Kansas with us today as an advisor to the CatholicVote.org to give us kind of an update on the outcome from Tuesday's elections. How are you today? Doing very well. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, we're glad to have you. I of course need... he's doing well. He's celebrating <laughs> Tuesday's election. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it didn't turn well, out too bad for the races. Yeah, unfortunately, it was only two states, or maybe three. So, um, but uh, no, it it uh, sends us perhaps a message for for next year as well. Mm-hmm. I think so, and we're, we'll get to that here in just a minute. I want to point out that um, Deacon Mike Bano is usually our host, um, and he is uh, suffering from some recuperation from a stroke this mm-hmm. last week. But so we have, oh. yeah, and he's very disappointed to miss this programming. So I uh, wanted to let you know that. And uh, with us today is Jean Till, who's um, uh, also a host of one of the shows here at Iowa Catholic Radio, who has uh, agreed to join me. So I wanted to introduce her to you and our listeners. Um, so uh, give us a, just a highlights, first of all, of um, what Catholic Vote is up to and how uh, their involvement in Tuesday's elections uh, resulted in success. Or failure, and you know, if there were any. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, but uh, first up front, it's it's amazing how close things really are, and how just a few people can make a significant difference in a, in a very big election. And uh, but yeah, there were elections in in uh, three states and in some cities as well. But uh, Catholic vote, uh, we were engaged in Virginia and uh, helpful in, in Pennsylvania, which was uh, we had some really good pro-life victories in both of those states, whether it's the governor's race in uh, Virginia or a Supreme Court uh, race in, in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but pro-life is still a winning issue. And, and also uh, what is uh, really interesting and exciting to see is that parents got engaged and said, hey, no, at the end of the day, we are the primary educators of our children. He met uh, Terry McAuliffe, the former governor of Virginia, said, no, it's the teachers' unions are in control of your children. So, you know, consistent with, uh, you know, Catholic doctrine and social teaching for forever is that now at the end of the day, the families are first and the parents uh, make those decisions. So Catholic vote, we were engaged in on the ground with text and phone calls in both of those states. And it's, you know, our, our goal is to engage and uh, educate and get more Catholics involved in the, in the political world, because that's not only our opportunity, it's our obligation. And at the end of the day, you saw those crazy things happening in Loudoun County, Virginia, uh, in which uh, parents uh, were subjected to all kinds of tyranny by the, the school board. And then the students were, uh, subjected to multiple things in their bathrooms as well. But at the end of the day, as uh, the people stood up, said enough of it is enough, and uh, we want to make sure our schools and our government and our economy reflects our needs, not the needs of uh, the liberal elites. Well, that's a big recap. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 well, I mean, even though you say you know the, the elections were, not every state had folks up for election at this point in time and nationally, and, and so, you know, what 
the ones you have to make progress where you can. Right. And in these off um, off year elections, oftentimes the turnout is very low. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad you mentioned um, how engaged parents were, because I can tell you as a parent, Mm -hmm. uh, my peers and friends uh, we're often too busy with their routines and their activities to go vote. You know, it gets by them, and because it's think, not that big of a deal, right? Right. You know, they have mm-hmm. it's just one vote, right? So mm-hmm. I think really, um, Congressman, it's very um, helpful that you pointed that out to our listeners because uh, every vote is very important. Engaged parents. Um, affect all that happens with their children, um, whether it's a school board election or a presidential election. Yeah, the vote is so critical. And uh, again, it is just one vote. But uh, what we saw and are seeing across the country, whether it's in, you know, in in Virginia and Pennsylvania, but Iowa and home state of Kansas is, you know, thousands and thousands of parents are standing up at school board meetings says, no, you're not going to teach racism and uh, and call it anti-racism in our schools. And uh, at the end of the day, though, we are going to make the decision about a curriculum. And if and if, if you don't deliver uh, what we think is mm-hmm. best for our children, we will either choose parochial education in terms of Catholics or, as many are doing, choosing homeschooling mm-hmm. when uh, maybe, uh, you know, the Catholic schools might not be available, particularly in rural areas. And they, uh, my, I'm the, mom, my wife and I are the parents of four kids. Uh, we've done the gamut, uh, gamut of uh, the gauntlet of uh, homeschooling in, in private schools and public schools and Catholic schools. At the end of the day, it was our choice. And, and so I would encourage parents to continue to get involved. I will tell you, as, as a former member of Congress and a former state legislator, it is actually rare where people engaging in writing and calling and catching uh, me at a town hall. And uh, But it does make a critical difference. And if you show up at a school board, you know, even if you get shouted down like uh, folks were in, in, in Loudoun County, the school board members remember. (laughs) They don't like parents to show up. They would rather you ignore them. And so it's not just the votes, but a Catholic vote. We want you to show up at the school board Mm -hmm. meetings as well because it has a huge impact because most folks are, again, as you mentioned, too busy, you know, trying to make sure there's food on the table and they're dealing with inflation and the gas prices are going up. Those are the real-life issues that uh, distract us oftentimes from uh, getting engaged in in the political realm. So I noticed that um, I was reading one of your follow-up uh, texts or emails from CatholicVote.org, and I, I noticed that they did some exit polling. Um, why don't you share with our listeners some of the stuff that, um, if you have it at your fingertips, um, if not, I also have the article here, but uh, share some of the information that came from that exit polling that would be very encouraging to Catholics and, and conservative citizens. Well, and the exit polls are just a, a disclaimer. Um, we, we didn't do those, uh, but we're reading those, and as we found out in 2020 and 2016, sometimes those are are not as uh, accurate as uh, they might be if you, you wait a few weeks. But originally, but the original, the uh, initial exit polls showed that, uh, you know, interestingly enough, uh, Hispanics, uh, many of them are, are Catholic Hispanics or, or, or uh, were, were voting for parents first and uh and uh you know the the bureaucracy's second or last and so uh, actually it's surprising where republicans were picking up hispanic votes and that's one thing we've tried to do and we found out that um that uh pro-life catholics uh oftentimes just need to go out and so pro-life was a winning issue in every state and uh and particularly in virginia so that's what the exit poll showed as well that uh you know for those that uh abortion was a major issue whether you for it or against it uh at the end of the day that that was a winning issue and i will tell you that uh, as again as a former republican congressman it's oftentimes you, you don't see that and hear that and uh, it it is uh it's helpful to the cause that these republicans hear well wait a minute you mean if i say I'm pro-life and actually vote pro-life, that'll help me in the election? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, that, that's a good sign and a good message. And, and that's, you know, whether it's in, in in Iowa as well, the flip side is there are a lot of Democrats looking at these results saying, well, wait a minute, how far have we gone? We've gone way too far, and they're now worried in Washington that, you know, folks like Cindy Axney are going to get beat. Uh, and and that, that really could happen. There could be really a sea change like there was back in 2010, and that's what they're talking about in Washington this morning, and <laughs> worried about uh, the impact of pro-life voters showing up next year. And that's uh, that's what we want to happen, obviously. Representative Camp, that 
Um, I found it humorous in my weird sense of humor that um, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, had made a, a comment or prior to the election that poorly paraphrased, you know, how Virginia goes, so goes the nation. And uh, I mean, that wasn't what she said, but that's the context of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, how prophetic. We hope she's prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it really so was. you agree with her on this subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I could tell you there's things I've said I've regretted as well. Yeah. Well, don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But those are one of those things. So, But yeah, that is the discussion you see and hear in, in our nation's capital. And, and one thing to point out as well, if you look at the Virginia election results, the closer and closer you were to D.C., the more likely you were to obviously vote for the Democrat or vote for the school board versus the parents or vote for, you know, you know, communist race theory or CRT or whatever they're calling that these days. And, and the further away you got, the more rural areas you got, the, the more you were away from the capital. You're like, wait a minute. I don't like the direction this nation is heading. I'm uncomfortable with what they're teaching my kids. I'm mm-hmm. uncomfortable with or aren't they able to, you know, pay uh, four dollars a gallon of gasoline mm-hmm. and those kind of things. So inflation and and uh, and and meanwhile in Washington, you know, they're just pushing bigger and bigger and woker and woker uh, to use a really bad term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and and people responded. And again, I hope it carries over Catholic vote. We think again, it's it's an opportunity, but we can't forget. At the end of the day, under Catholic social teaching, it is our obligation. And, uh, you know, we obviously have an obligation to Sunday Mass, but that's the minimum. And voting, I would say, in the public realm is the minimum as well. So we literally had hundreds and hundreds of callers and people sending texts from around the country into Virginia. And they, they were doing the same thing in in, uh, in 2020 as well. And we hope to continue that going forward. And, and we hope to actually uh, get really involved in, uh, in in Iowa as well to make certain that we have pro-life uh, representatives all across Iowa in, in Congress, but also those that respect parents and recognize that we are the primary educators of our children. And so it's a, it's a good sign, uh, but there's a lot of work ahead to make certain that, uh, that we continue to move in the, in the direction uh, we believe our country should move. That's a wonderful reminder for, for mm-hmm. all of us. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, real quick, can you give us some highlights? Uh, something we didn't hear about in, in the national or local news was this race you were involved in for the Supreme Court seat in Pennsylvania. Um, give us an idea of what Catholic Vote did to help um, Republican Kevin, pro-life uh, Republican Kevin Robson win uh, a 10-year term by four points. Yeah, it was a, it was a somewhat surprising victory. Uh, we had a, a group of callers that were calling for months and uh, just encouraging, you know, pro-life, generally Republicans and uh, church attending Catholics. Uh, hey, just turn out and vote. And and, and uh, we believe they did. We also sent out texts that uh, encouraged them to vote as well. And, and in these particular races, which are considered off year, they're not during the presidential election or the two years in between. So turnout usually goes down. And so that's the time where you have the greatest opportunity to say, hey, get out and vote. You can't. And, and people have all kinds of reasons not to vote. And, uh, you know, my vote doesn't count or I don't have time today. But at the end of the day, if we work together as a community and then work together as a, a, a folks that are concerned jointly for the future of our state and nation, as you can see in that race, we beat the millions and millions of dollars that Planned Parenthood put in against us, uh, uh, against the, the gentleman running on the Republican side. Mm-hmm. And, and down the ticket, it happened as well. So it's, uh, well, it's actually sometimes a greater opportunity to make a difference in these off-year elections, as we saw in Pennsylvania. And not just an election. I think it, it saves lives. Those babies will, will be very thankful to have that pro-life judge mm-hmm. on those courts and understands life. Um, oh, absolutely. You, you talk about the elections. I know we have to wrap it up here, but um, I want li- our listeners to uh, look up the story of Edward Durr from, uh, is he from New Jersey? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, yeah. yeah, he's the real Cinderella story yeah. from Tuesday. He Truck ra- driver. Yes, he mm-hmm. drove, uh, he raised $10,000, I think spent maybe 156 of that, <laughs> and beat the uh, Senate president of the New Jersey uh, Congress or yeah. New Jersey uh, State House, so. blue collar with a strong conser- conservative belief. It's mm-hmm. like okay, there's a tagline for you. So uh, that means any one of us, if we wanted mm-hmm. to be involved, we could, and there's a chance for all of us to be mm-hmm. part of the uh, making things right. 
Um, oh, we, we've seen, seen those as, as well. And so, like I mentioned, I served in the state house, you know, and that always gives people hope that, you know, you could win. And I've seen that again and again, some of these smaller stories and smaller races in which, wait a minute, if someone just shows up, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Uh, because the, oftentimes the, the far left, the big government socialists, they just don't talk to real people like truck drivers. And suddenly here this guy comes up and, and surprises them. It's a, it's a great mm-hmm. story, but it's a great story of how in America, like perhaps a lot of other countries around the world, elections are equalizers. It's the opportunity for the little guy to stand up and say, no, these are my kids, not yours. That's uh, this right. is my state, not yours. At the end of the day, uh, far too many, quote unquote, public servants think the public serves them. And it's a wake up reminder to uh, the soon to be former Senate president. It's like, wait a minute. I forgot who I work who for. Who I work for. And, yeah. And yeah. He didn't win, win the garbage truck um, <laughs> campaign chairman of the year. No, he, no, he won the, <laughs> the, the C from the yes. Senate president. I That's mean, this right. is huge. Well, well this it, is amazing. It, yeah. It's been great pleasure having you today. Um, can, just before we wrap it up, why don't you let our listeners know how they can support CatholicVote.org and um, how we can follow more of what uh, your organization is doing. Yeah, we do a number of things, and uh, we, we're involved on the political side, so we're always looking for volunteers, whether it's in, in, one own, in one's own state or around the country. You know, we had, uh, kind of, I don't know how many different states of uh, Catholics from different states were involved in Virginia. So you can check out our opportunities uh, We uh, at CatholicVote.org. We also uh, have a daily uh, email called The Loop that uh, has a fresh Catholic perspective and it's one of the fastest growing uh, sources of information for Catholics across the country. We also have a new online video series called Edify. Check that out in which we try to educate Catholics with proper moral and social teaching uh, uh, about uh, what Catholics ought to think and how we ought to get involved. So there's a number of different ways to, to help. Of course, uh, we're always trying to, you know, make certain we're, we're funding all this because at the end of the day, I think it, you know, it is the church getting involved and making a difference in so many places. So we're excited to be involved and excited to be on Iowa Catholic radio and, and, and partner with you on uh, making certain that uh, we, we live out our faith in in the public realm as well. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Representative Hughes camp. I just, you know, I look forward to this 2022 midterm election and you're like, you can't wait until the week before to start studying. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to be yeah. educated yeah. and prepared. So that's right. Yeah, thank you for the resources you doing. provide. Oh, well, we got yeah, absolutely. Ha- I'm sorry to yep. cut you off. We have to take a break now and we'll be back uh, after these messages. Thank you. Thank you. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. CTOiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Welcome back to Faith on Trial. Uh, Gene, what did you think about um, Congressman, former Congressman Hulescamp? 
Well, he has that broad range of knowledge, both local and national. And so uh, now as the senior political advisor to CatholicVote.org, you know he's coming from that rich background. And as CatholicVote.org, you know he's he's rooted in the faith. And so that helps us not not that we shouldn't research the issues, but we have a source that does research the issues. Uh, a trusting, a source that we can trust, mm-hmm. which is um, always difficult with the internet to mm-hmm. find. You know, you think you're there and then you realize this is not what I was looking for. Well, and all of the sources come from their point of view. We're not going to find an, a neutral point of view pretty much anywhere these days. So you have to find that point of view that aligns with your beliefs. Yeah, I was listening to our uh, the show that was on oh, before the rosary and before at us, nine o'clock at Catholic nine women o'clock. now that's mm-hmm. right and i noticed that they brought up um saints today but and i'm going to point out one that um the co-host julie nelson was talked about saint catherine of siena mm. and saint catherine of siena said a very good thing about politicians she <laughs> said that politicians that serve selfish needs for power and greed world leaders dictating how the pope should lead the church what is right what is wrong what is wrong is right and incurable diseases are epidemic Catholic trust eroding. That's a society that we're living in, and she was mm. able to turn it around with prayer and and um, respect for the position of the Pope and and the position of political leaders. And I think that's all of our. So in her um, in her in in following her direction and mentorship, uh, I think that's what we need to do as Catholics: mm-hmm. respect, trust. Yep. It was, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. exactly, and it it takes all of us to mm-hmm. make sure that we um, that we volunteer to be these leaders and to support the leaders who are leading us in in truth and hope. So I think we'll wrap it up today with a prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel uh, again for Deacon Mike and his family in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. For Deacon Mike, myself, and Miss Till, thank you for listening. (laughs) Join us next week for another edition of Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. Until then, have a blessed and peaceful week. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano. Faith on Trial, Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio, iowacatholicradio.com, and the Iowa Catholic Radio app.